Welcome to Hot Chips 2023. Session 1. Processing in Memory. Uh, welcome to Processing in Memory session. I'm Jay Lee from Seoul National University. I'm your session chair. And we have two very, very interesting talks today. One from SK Hynix and the other from Samsung. And both talks will address the memory bandwidth and energy efficiency challenges in serving a large language model by bringing compute closer to memory. So to start with the first um, speaker, the first speaker is Yonggi Kwan from SK Hynix. He is a principal research staff member at SK Hynix, where he currently leads a processing memory effort um, as, a, as an architect. His uh, research focuses on memory-centric computing, and his interest spans both the software stack and hardware architectures. And, and he has over like 30 granted patents and co-authors a dozen papers in this area. Uh, he received his bachelor's degree from Seoul National University and PhD from UT Austin. Uh, by the way, the Slack channel for this talk is pound 1-1 SK Hynix. Yonggi, the podium is yours. So right, thanks for the kind introduction, Professor Lee. So I'm Yonggi Kwan. So good morning, everybody. This is such a great honor to talk about our domain specific memory designed to accelerate large language model efficiently. So this is today's agenda. So let me begin with a brief introduction of generative AI and large language models. So generative AI, AI this is one of my favorite quotes by Bill Gates early this, this year. This new technology can help people everywhere improve their lives. It's so probably at the center of generative AI large language models it's behind the generative AI boom as being so useful for AI chatbot or programming assistant or neural translation. The, key, the question is then, what are the key challenges for it to be efficient? So it turns out that unlike training costs that we pay once and get amortized over time, so inference cost is proportional to number of users so the cost is very important. So in the previous section in the keynote, so cost falls in two parts. First of all, it's capital expenditure or hardware cost, also like op operational expenditure or like a electricity consumed or power provisioned. So I would say inference is all about efficiency. Like everything that contributes cost is very important. So let's take a look at the transformer model, the fundamental building block of all, virtually all large language models. So at the center, so I take transformer architecture and large language models, like take the other part of transform, transformer architecture. So if you're not so familiar with this one, it's still okay. So what I want to say here is that, you know, like as the model size grows from few billions to about a hundred billion, the two layers account for majority parameters. And what these two models, two layers do when we solve large language models, it's nothing but a bunch of large matrix vector multiplications. So unlike matrix matrix multiplication, or GEM in BLAST terminology, so GEM V or matrix vector multiplication is completely by execution time to load gigantic matrix, or simply by memory bandwidth. So for efficient large language model solving, not only we need sufficient capacity, but also we need high bandwidth. But also don't forget that we want it to be very cost efficient. So let's take a look at, since we know that it's all about memory, so let's take a look at what, are the, mem what the memory technologies are currently available. So this plot is a memory bandwidth versus cost in terms of dollars per gigabyte. At the right top corner, you see a HBM3 memory which offers tremendous you know, memory bandwidth. In fact, this HBM3, we just have made announcement about it in work ago. 
a week ago, it actually offered a tremendous bandwidth of 1.15 terabyte per second. But this great you know, like bandwidth comes at the cost. With advanced technology such as through silicon beer, silicon interposer, or other advanced packaging technologies. So on the other hand, we have a commodity DRAMs that are much more you know, tightly cost optimized. We have DDR5, FDDR5, or GDDR6, and each memory has its own markets and applications. But however, none of these meet the challenges for large language models. So besides this standard memory, there is a few attempts to you know, fill the gap of various demand. So many DM solutions shown here is one such example that SK Hynix has introduced in 2019. It's designed to be you know, like very cost-efficient solution for high capacity solution. Today, I'm about to introduce our domain specific memory designed to, designed to address all the challenges of high bandwidth, being cost-efficient and energy-efficient. So the philosophy behind it, this you know, domain specific memory is a memory centric computing. So if the matrix is so large, and we are, when also we, move, we, are, we are using the matrix just once, one time computation. Okay. We had a problem with your advance. Use this for advancing. This button right here. Okay. Thanks. Sorry for interruption. So then why not moving compute instead of gigantic data? So this is the philosophy we just started at the beginning. So, okay. So the mindset we had at the beginning is memory as an accelerator, as the, our name of accelerator in memory indicate. Also, I want to emphasize again, it's all about efficiency. And let me show you how we achieve or maximize the efficiency. First principle we had when we designed accelerator in memory was to maximize parallelism because parallelism is everything for performance. So we achieve true or bank parallelism by placing processing unit for all 16 banks. So note that DRAM is consists of a 16 bank internally. So we are able to exploit a 16 times higher internal bandwidth than available externally. That's what we did. So the, the, the table on the right summarizes the key features of our product. And those in blue are like a key features for our GDDR6 AIM. So note that so by exploiting all 16 banks, so we are able to exploit you know, 512 gigabyte per second, again, 16, 16 times higher than external bandwidth of 32 gigabyte. But also we chose brain floating 16 because AIM is designed for AI from the beginning. The second design principle was to accelerate the key operations from end to end. So this is BG's slide, but let's take a look at the operation shown at the top right corner. So what it does is, this is called as a fully connected layer, or open dense linear layer two. So what it does is a given weight matrix and active activation buffer. So we took we take the multiplication plus bias followed by some nonlinear function for activation. So this is exactly what we accelerate in memory. So note that if any of this were not supported in the memory, then it has to fall back to the host. If so, then we would actually end up hurting compute or energy efficiency quite significantly. For instance, if you take a look at the plot on the left, if we didn't support like reduce the tree there, then probably we can also perform activation function. Moreover, also we have to also communicate with the host 16 times or frequently. That's exactly against our philosophy. The last design principle we focus on is actually to maximize high compute efficiency. So we utilize all 16 banks. So the, the highest parallelism is defined by the architecture. The second question is how we actually realize such a high parallelism. So to achieve this one, we carefully you know, design the control mechanism and then specific memory command. So among this, because we are dealing with all you know, like a banks simultaneously in parallel, it's very important to have a one single command that control all 16 banks. So let's switch gears to talk about you know, like scaling. Since we are dealing with a large language model, and scaling is essential, it's inevitable due to the sheer size. So serving large language models, we also need a large number of accelerated memory 
which is memories. Let's take a look at the plot here. This bar chart shows minimum capacity to serve like a large language model spanning from like a few billions to 175 billion. So we take this one from like a popular large language model such as GPT-3 or Lama 1 and 2 or OPT. And the dotted line on top shows the minimum number of AIM cards. So let's assume that accelerating memory is actually attached on a card and each card holds eight AIM packages. So I use the terminology of package here because you know our package host dual die as shown in the figure on the right. It's called those DDP2. So for instance, if you take a look at those in the box, 13 billion parameters, then we need a aim 32 of them. So let me show you our packaging hierarchy example here too. So take a look at the aim based system, which is corresponding to say, for instance, a PCI attached card. It's composed of a eight AIM packages or 16 AIM channels, and four of these form a scale out accelerating memory to form a 32 gigabyte system. Let's take a look at the numbers. So in this scale out accelerating in memory, we have a 64 AIM channels or dice, or 1024 processing unit inside accelerating memory. So this is typical numbers that we are dealing with when it solves certain scale of large, large language models. So key techniques for you know, efficient scaling accelerating for large language models. We have three. So we learned this one while we're optimizing these models. First of all, I told you like large language models are nothing but a bunch of large metric spectrum multiplication, many of them. So we need to be able to map these large metrics into small pieces of computing unit. This is key challenge. <coughs> Second of all, we also what kind of hardware support do we need to, you know, like we need to design for scalability. And lastly, but not leastly, and the hardware software interface or how we design instruction set to control this many processing units. So let's take a look at the first challenge here. So we, so, so we design and specific tiling for practical yet efficient mapping. Let's take a look at the tile shown at the top right. The tile is a unit of parallelism. It's designed to maximize parallelism. Also locality here too. So the, the, the shape of the tile is defined as a the, the size of the DRAM lower word line, which is corresponding to 1024 here, versus the number of parallel units here. This is computed as number of banks per channel with total number of banks or total number of processing units. So as a result, we have a tile shape of a 1024 by 256. With this aim specific tiling, now partitioning matrix is become now turned into tiling tiling the gigantic matrices. Now, this example is a, of a 4K by 4K matrix. It's shown here at the bottom, there are multiple ways to traverse ties. For instance, we can traverse ties horizontally or vertically or somewhere in between. For the, for the sake of time constraint, I can go deeper, but we found this straightforward tiling mechanism works very well in practice. Moreover, also like a tiling, tile scheduling policy is very critical when you optimize the performance as we will see in the evaluation section. And also, let me talk about our system architecture. The architecture goal is, the, the first goal was to enable efficient scaling, as it's a unit of scaling. Moreover, also, it's also important to have a high performance, as single-threaded performance has been important as well. And lastly, also, we want we design the system architecture for ease of programming, while minimizing system software overhead, but still allowing software stack for flexibility. These are key components in our system. First of all, accelerating memory is still memory, so it has to be managed by its own controller that generates and schedule low-level command. And we have uh, as many as controllers as the AIM dice or AIM channels. So also we design scalable multicasting to connect for flexible and efficient data exchange. 
We also support various communication patterns such as a unicast, multicast, or broadcasting. Broadcasting is quite common in large language models. Also for scaling out, we also design custom router, exploiting like chip-to-chip -chip interconnect. And we have also a tiny compute unit to support end-to-end -to -end, end -end GPT operations. Currently, we implement just two operations. One is layer normalizations, another is softmax. So this is a, our, the most important instruction of metric spectral accumulate. So based on the tie structure that I just showed earlier, we can entire operation defined by the tile with this instruction. So this instruction comes with the channel mask, starting address, and number of iterations. So let me show you one, one, one step by step. So this instruction, let's say, it's sent from host, and it says, hey, this is MAC instruction, it's no mask error, need to be broadcast to all channels, starting from zero, repeating 64 times. Then this instruction is further decoded into multiple micro instructions by instructions decoder. Then these micro instructions are also multicasted, in this case broadcasted into each channel by our, by our scalable multicast interconnect. Then these micro instructions are also further translated into low level accelerating memory or memory command. And finally, this way, via single command, we are able to keep our accessory accelerating memory, bunch of them, as big as possible. This is one of the key optimization. Let me skip this slide. So this is about our like a, another optimization technique for scale of architecture and few aim specific optimizations. But yeah, hope you can read it through offline. This is the last section. So let me show you our system analysis with our prototype accelerator shown in shown at the bottom. So, to prove, so as a proof of concept, and also to prove the key techniques that I showed earlier, we created a reference platform with FPJ. But shown, we used two Jarlings FPJ to host 16 accelerating memory in total 16 gigabyte. And each FPJ we implement a centric system independently. And shown in the bottom right, so AIM controllers 16 of them account for majority of areas. Unlike typical accelerator, devout majority of areas either compute engines or on chip local memory. It is because majority of computations are now dealt by our accelerated memory at far higher bandwidth than external bandwidth. We also built our M software stack that supports scale up M system. Let's take a look at the picture on the bottom. This is a real, we host for accelerating memory prototype card. So our software stack is able to deal with this scale of system efficiently. At the top, we also support most like popular large language models such as Llama or OPT. On the right, also we also created the graphing user interface for demonstration as well. Currently, we support two framework of PyTorch and Onyx runtime. And also, I highlighted key building blocks for efficient partitioning and also mapping colored in oranges here. Our runtime library is taking care of partitioning and also tiling and tile scheduling, whereas our memory allocator allocate memory based on our aim specific tiles. I also want to emphasize that, you know, the tooling is also very important. So on the way, also, we implement performance profiler shown at the bottom line. So currently, we generate highly optimized like a instruction stream based on our own library. It's in parallel, also, we are also investing compiler-based approach for flexibility, scalability, also proven optimality using MLIR. So finally, let me show you our performance analysis. First, we measured effective bandwidth during Gen V. We decided to report absolute bandwidth in terms of gigabyte per second. So let's take a look at two dimmed line at the bottom. This two dimmed line is either low for scheduling or column for scheduling for tiling. And we measure this with our accelerator in memory prototype card. And as you can see here, as we increase the metric sizes, then the effective bandwidth approach is about 1.7 terabyte per second. 
despite limited, you know, like a FP, we use FPJ, and because of that, our prototype card is learning at one sixth of the peak bandwidth of our our GDDR6 AIM. In numbers, our GDDR6 AIM is able to learn at 16 gigabps, but our prototype card is learning at 2.67 gigabps. But despite this limitation, our card is able to about 1.7 terabyte per second, which is as high as the state of the R GPU with HP memories. So with this measurement and careful interpolation, we also created a performance model, which is proven to be cycle accurate. And with this performance model, we now estimate the performance of the accelerator card at full speed, shown in the two lines of blue and green. So like the POC case where low first scheduling outperforms, in this setup, column first scheduling is better. So meaning that depending on the shape of metrics, the size of metrics, or like speed, different scheduling policy can be the best option. So it's very critical to have a flexible software stack to generate optimal policy. So our estimation shows that our accelerator card is able to achieve six terabyte per second. So I don't know any I don't know of any accelerator country available that achieve this many unless the like, twice more HBM is put than available. And also, we measured GPT-3 6.7 billion model performance from end to end. So also, I put the GP GPU wizard taken from faster transformer as a just reference, but I'm sure there is a better wizard out there too. First of all, our prototype card, again, is able to provide a comparable performance despite far lower bandwidth. And our accelerating memory card at full speed is expected to generate 300 tokens per second. And also, the last plot shows the scaling behavior. Again, the, the bottom plot of the gray color is taken from faster transformer, like A1 and 1, 2, and 4 A100 GPUs for reference. But our, our prototype card is just now 16 gigabyte. 16 gigabyte in capacity. So we need a little bit more, three, four, or 16. As shown here, thanks to our custom router, and to our custom router allows pretty efficient scaling as well. So let me show you system integration options here. So for instance, our accelerating memory can be integrated into MPU. It's another highly efficient domain-specific accelerator. Open comes with a highly efficient matrix engine such as Systric Array. Of course, it can be also plugged into GPU as well. Moreover, like I already demonstrated, we also strongly believe for high stable cost and energy efficiency, we still could create the accelerating memory system with very lightweight accelerator. So this is my last slide. So as I showed our first generation of accelerated memory. It's already up and running in, with the prototype card. So since, it's well, since we are well prepared and we will participate in many events coming this year, for instance, in two weeks, we will participate in, participate in AI Hardware Summit. So I really couldn't talk too much about all the details. If you are interested in learning more about it, please drop by the conference. Moreover, we are also looking forward to your proposals. For instance, if we built ASIC controller, then it could have been made much smaller, freeing more space for AIMs. That's one thing we are excited about. The next step, we are looking for high capacity solution. So GDDR6 is great in terms of performance, but the capacity is a little limited. On the other hand, LPDDR offers much higher capacity, but also moreover, like LPDDR is also getting very fast. So we believe this is a very good candidate for high capacity solution for even larger models. So we are currently under exploring architecture, analyzing performance, like power, summer, and costs. But also we are anticipating your input. For instance, we are actively investigating what kind of numeric precisions we'd like to support. Because DRAM process is somewhat limited, we want to make a careful decision 
So that's why we are anticipating your design or architecture input. This is getting to the end of my talk. Thank you everyone for listening. All right, thank you very much, Yonggi. Perhaps we can start from a Slack question while people are lining up at the microphones. Deepak? Microphone. We can't hear you. Yeah, question from Simha Sedu Madhavan, Colombia, and Kazue Hironaka, Hitachi. Can you speak about the error correction used in a, uh, accelerator in memory? Correct. Yeah, so that's a good question. So right now we rely on the baseline DRAM type which doesn't support ECC at the moment. So this is another critical question. For the LPDDR, it supports another type of ECC, but at the moment we just you know believe that you know AI applications somehow resilient to a little bit of errors. So yeah, that's our homework for the future. Okay, so on your right microphone, can you actually state your name affiliation first? Uh, Fritz Kruger, Qualcomm. Uh, I'm curious, how many layers of metal does your prototype have compared to the consumer GDDR6 part? The number of metals in DRAM, right? Yeah. So we use four metals typically, but I guess we, I think we also use one more metals. Okay, yeah. so you use one additional metal layer? Yes. Okay, thank you. Next. Hi, Sarah Bivani, great come. Um, I have a question concerning, uh, on slide 22 you showed some performance numbers mm -hmm. and you had a, a, a plot at the, uh, the right side and you're plotting uh, system capacity versus uh, you know, tokens uh, yes. uh, generated per second. So all your curves are still <laughs> climbing. There's no need there, so it seems like you have a lot of capacity left, your memory bound. And uh, have you have you done any other proof of concepts where you increase the uh, the capacity because you're still limited no, at 512 yeah. gigabytes? Okay, yeah. Just tell me if I answer your question. So we need different different many accelerator. For GPU, we need just one, two, and four. For our prototype card, we need three, four, six, or six, sixteen. So different numbers. So if you look at the x-axis, that actually present the total system capacity. For instance, the system is made up of 64 gigabyte. Then we need four cards. Right. So that's so how we read the graph. Okay, so, so, so the x axis is actually the, the total, right? Yes. And you're still limited. <laughs> Maybe we should talk offline afterwards. Thanks. You still have ways to go. Okay. Yes. Thanks. Maybe you can take one more uh, Slack question before we put the next question. Yeah, question from Cliff Young, Google. Is your Mac Ridge also BF16, not FP32? Mac Latch. Yeah. Okay, so we compute Mac in Brainflow 16, but accumulation is done in 32 bits. Okay. Hope I answered. Next question. Uh, Jeff Smith, Citadel Securities. So this is based off of you know, GDDR, maybe LPDDR next. So you're mixing DRAM and you know, denser logic on a single die. And yes. I think everyone conventionally thought in the past that, you know, these things are not easy uh, you know, to mix or these competing goals. So what led you guys to go down this design path versus stacking and putting your, your FMAs and so forth in like the base die in HPM? So why, why GDDR, not HPM? Yeah, that's a good question, I guess. I tried to make it very clear at the beginning. So we care so much about the cost. So every stacking technology costs you something. For instance, the true silicon beer costs you most. Wire bonding, the need to you know, stack up LPDDR is a little bit better. So there are like the other technology for stacking, but we chose like GDDR6 for the first product as its fastest learning memory and also it offers pretty good cost efficiency. But for second generation, we still also opted out for HBM. It's still too expensive, too good, too premium memory. So we want it to be very cost efficient. This is primary. This goal. is a mass market product, maybe. I think so. Well, thank you very much yeah. for your talk. Yeah. All right, well, let's take just one more last question from Slack. Yeah, question from Johannes uh, Nvidia. Do you have any energy efficiency data like average energy per BF60 up from your evaluations? So energy efficiency of what? Brain product 16 or? 
Right. Do you have any energy efficiency data? Uh, oh, yeah. That's a good question. So I wanted to disclose a little bit more about energy analysis. It's on the way. So for instance, I can give you a bulk of numbers for the prototype, the prototype accelerator card we created. I measured the power draw. It's way below 75 watts. But the very detailed energy and power analysis is on the way. We will talk more about it then, at the end of this year. Yeah. Thank you. All right. Let's thank Yongi. Let's thank the speaker. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. The second speaker of the session is uh, Jin Hyun Kim. Uh, he is a principal engineer at Samsung. Uh, he joined Samsung in 1997 and has Thank since you. contributed to various DRAM designs, including uh, Rambus, DDR, GDDR, and PDDR. And he has also worked on product planning, JEDEX standardization, and new memory businesses like PIM. Uh, he holds more than 50 patents in the related area, has master's degree from Seoul, uh, Korea University. By the way, the Slack channel for this talk is pound C1-2 Samsung. Jinhyun, the podium is yours. Yeah, thanks, Chairman. Um, yeah. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, nice to meet you. My name is uh, Jinhyun Kim. Uh, today, I will the, present uh, Samsung PIM and the PNM for transformer the, the based AI. Yeah. Today, uh, firstly, we will the, start memory trends and the bottleneck in the H HPC and the AI application. And then I'm going to introduce uh, Samsung memory AI solutions such as uh, HPM PIM and uh, LPDDR PIM and uh, CXL PNM. Yeah, uh, this picture on the left shows the, the energy cost of data transfer. Uh, most of the energy consumption comes from the moving data. The host needs more the communication with DRAM because SRAM scaling uh, expansion is very, very uh, difficult. On the right, at the, the Hot Chips 2021 conference, I already the, talked about the need for the domain-specific memories within the existing the memory the hierarchy. These memories must meet the specific requirement of each hierarchy. And Samsung has a lot of domain-specific memory the technology. For example, less driver cache DRAM and the CXL DRAM and the smart storage and the memory is the semantic SSD. However, today I will the focus HBM PIM and the LPDDR PIM and the CXL PNM in the hierarchy of AI memory solution. Yeah, um, this picture on the left shows the memory the system in a conventional computing the structure. And uh, typically hosts are connected to memory in the forms of DIMMs, uh, component device, or the 3D stacking the packages. Supporting the bandwidth scaling uh, while maintaining from form factor in the current the architecture is uh, near uh, either the costly or the power hungry. The figure on the right shows the various technology from the memory industry to overcome this, the high bandwidth barriers. First is the MCR DIM using dual rank the activation, but we end up paying for the SODES energy and the PCB cost. The second is the PAM port applied to the GDDR6X and the GDDR7. However, the multi-level signaling has a disadvantage of high power consumption due to the encoder and the decoder to change it to a multi-level and a high cost for the impedance matching and the crosstalk. The finally, there is a 2.5D or the 3D the stacking with the HBM. However, HBM the required the, uh, much higher the assembly cost than the silicon die. Due to the, the stacking limitations, thermal issues, and the complex assembly the techniques. The industry needs a new the interface for the expansion of memory technology. While there is a, a several types of open industry the standard for CXL interface, 
we are the focusing on the type 3, the memory, the property technology. CXL.io and CXL.mem offer a variety of solution features as well as the ability to uh, hide the limitation of DRAM the, uh, media itself. Modern large language model for generated AI is basically transformer-based uh, solution. The figure on the left shows the, the basic component of the transformer and their the orders. The LLMs mainly use a decoder among uh, this component. We focus on the linear the blocks in the multi-head attention and the feed forward network. On the center for major matrix multiplication consists of QKV mappings and a fully connected layer. It is mainly GenV operation, which is the memory the bounded. In the figure on the right, the GPT algorithm consists of the summarization and the generation stage. It shows that memory, uh, memory load and the store time is the performance bottleneck of the whole system, system due to the poor the bandwidth of the generation stage. We analyzed the much, how much the generation stage contributed to the overall GPT. In terms of the number of operations, we can see the gem width for generation stage is 87%, while gem for the summarizing strategy is 13%. And in terms of latency, you can see the it's 83% for generation stage and 2% for the summarization stage. Yeah, this slide shows the, the GPU the utilization and the execution time breakdown. The left picture shows the kernel execution versus the memory the copy. The most of the execution time is the, the spent for the memory copy from the host CPU memory to the GPU memory. The right picture shows the GPU utilization by GPU hardware operation. Utilization for performing GenVid operation in generation stage is seriously lower the, uh, compared to the Gem, around uh, about uh, 20%. As you analyzed earlier, uh, as number of output corner the increase, GenVid operation dominates the inference the time. We need uh, to pay attention to the uh, multi-head attention and the uh, feed forward network in the generation stage, which is the account for the more than the 80%. For the GenV operation, which is the bottleneck of the overall the execution time, we need to dramatically increase the memory the bandwidth. If you can increase the memory bandwidth by about four times with the PIM and the PNM, you can obviously reduce the total system execution time. We found out that uh, this uh, reduction in execution time can improve the overall energy the efficiency by more than the 70%. Yeah, uh, we should uh, remember that this ISCC 2023, the AMD mentioned the key corners can, uh, can be the executed directly in the memory, saving communication energy. According to AMD's analysis, PIM can reduce the energy by 85%. And we wanted to change the potential of the customer from being stuck with the HBM2 PIM, just a POC the concept. The future the memory, uh, HBM PIM concept on the right has all DRAM die stacking at the 12 high with the minimum the PIM the block. This means that there is no reduction in overall DRAM the capacity by the PIM, and the size of it is not the significant. This slide shows the performance test result for GPT using HBM PIM. We use the GPT-J, which has the 6 billion 32 input tokens, single AMD the MI100 GPU for this the experiment. We figure out about two times uh, greater system energy efficiency compared to the GPU with the normal the HBM. 
Another thing to note is that uh, both uh, energy efficiency and the performance increase uh, as, uh, as the, the number of the up token increase. Uh, in the, in the uh, below graph, as the number of output increased uh, from 64 to 256, the energy efficiency increased by 25% and the performance gain in the increased by 8%. This slide shows the HPM PIM cluster we actually built from the development of a single PIM board. Uh, this cluster system consists of a total 69 MI100 PIM GPU in the cluster. This is a 12 node interconnected through the 200 gigat infinite band network. One PIM server consists of 8 MI100 PIM GPUs per node. Total memory capacity is 2.25 terabyte, and the total PIM performance is 471.9 teraflops, and the total GPU performance is 17.7 petaflops for the floating point 16. Yeah, we tried to accelerate the large scale the workload. The first workload was T5 based MOE the model. Some feed for the rail is T5 model are uh, updated to use our PIM Python library. Those rails account for the major portion of the execution time. PIMPy library is a Python library for providing the PIM enabled AI operator. PIM SDK provides not only PIMPy library but also a full software stack for utilizing the PIM. We evaluated the work on the various number of GPUs, such as the uh, 32 and the 64 GPUs. The baseline case is the same configuration without using PIM. In terms of the system-wide energy, PIM increased the energy efficiency by more than maybe uh, three times over baseline in the case of 32 GPUs. In terms of the execution time, HBM PIM cluster has more than two times greater the performance compared to the baseline, even in the, the case of 64 GPUs. I'd like to talk about the PIM software stack that supported the existing AI frameworks such as the PyTorch. PIM runtime library is the essential the stack to uh, utilize the uh, PIM function. It provides the operator level the optimization during PIM operation. PIM AI the compiler can provide further graph level optimization during end-to-end -end workload, workload execution. We plan to put the feature to use PIM and Seeker and OpenACC the standard. PIM Seeker the accelerate the upcoming HPC and the AI application on the heterogeneous the platform. And the PIM Open ACC is under the development for the legacy the scientific the applications. The 1MCC is open source to make it easier to use memory solutions such as PIM, PNM, CXL on the various the platform. And 1MCC support both Compiler and runtime to the utilize the in various uh, do, uh, domain, the including and the AI and the HPC. We plan to release our the simulator so that industry and the academia can work together. And Samsung plan to the development to, uh, one MCC into a the common software stack for memory computing. And uh, we look forward to the co-work with uh, the various companies in the, in the uh, future. Yes, uh, currently the generation AI is mainly the, the serviced through the data center due to the, the construction of hardware and the software infra. However, there is many difficult points which are the power, TCO, and the privacy uh, latency network, and the personality and the, the copyright. So it is necessary to offload to client and the edge device. 
training at data center in the inference at uh, client will be uh, the important trend. And this solution is much cheaper and uh, more uh, energy efficient. So the, for this, the model weight, the reduction, and the specialized AI the model is necessary. And along with this domain-specific AI model and the domain-specific hardware solution is required. We think uh, LPDDR PIM can solve many of these problems. Yeah, this slide explains the, the concept of LPDDR PIM compared to the, the data movement of a typical host and LPDDR5 on the left. LPDDR PIM on the right the dramatically reduced the data movement. As shown in the picture of the LPDDR PIM, the performance can ideally be increased by the eight times if a PIM unit in, is the installed per bank. This technology can improve the performance of the memory bound operation as shown on the left graph. Applying this technology to GPT-2, we found that the typical mobile device can achieve 4.5 times performance and 71% energy reduction. LPDDR PIM enables a peak internal bandwidth of 102.4 gigabytes per second when the LPDDR with a single PIM unit per bank. We can utilize the higher bandwidth to provide the native the integer, floating point, arithmetic, and the logical the operations. LPDDR PIM is a target for accelerating memory bound operations such as the plus one and the plus two. In the RLNT transformer and the GPT-2, we have seen three to four times performance and 60 to 7% energy reduction. This slide show more the detailed architecture of LPDDR PIM. PIM unit can be placed one unit per bank or the one unit per two banks, depend on the performance and the power. PIM unit consists of 256 bit SIM the floating point unit and the registers, which are the 640 byte per PIM block. The LPDDR PIM can support the floating point 16, the multiplication, floating point 32 of communication, and the integer 8, the arithmetic, the etc. It uses various the PIM register, which are the instruction register file and the vector register file and the scalar register file. Yeah, uh, we simulated the power consumption and the energy reduction using the LPDDR PIM based the existing the hardware result. In the left graph, we the measured the average system power on the GPT-2 over time. The blue line represents host plus LPDDR5 with a PIM. The red line represents the power of one PIM unit per bank, and the green line represents the power of one PIM per two banks. The graph show that uh, compared to the blue line, the red line show a uh, 71% uh, energy reduction due to 4.5 uh, times speed up, uh, despite of a slightly increased uh, peak power. However, the green line ut uh, utilized the 2.7 times speed up to limit the increase in peak power and result in the 69% energy reduction. In result, we can get about 70% energy reduction due to the data movement reduction. The graph below the analyzed the power consumption in each case. Okay, we already announced the AXDM technology, which is the DDR interface based the processing neo memory. Now we propose the CXL based the processing neo memory the solution. The CXL PNM can be the implemented as on CXL controller and on device memory, depending on the location of the PNM, the engine. In the case of a CXL controller, 
PNM engine is inside the controller, uh, enabling the memory control and uh, the large scale processing, the large memory, using the large memory. And this solution also reduces the data movement between host and uh, CXL the controller. In the case of on-device memory, the PLM engine can be located inside in the DRAM package to improve the performance by fully utilizing the bank and the rank the parallelism. The slide shows the system structure of CXL PNM. It consists of the host processor, DDR memory, and the CXL PNM connected through the, the CXL interface. The CXL PNM is a large memory capacity and a high bandwidth of a platform integrated with the, the, the CXL the controller and the PNM engine. It includes the multiple memory the device and the CXL the controller that the handle the jam and the jam with the, the operations. This slide shows the 512 gigabyte, 1.1 terabyte per second CXL PNM concept. As you shown in the left picture, we can uh, place up to the eight wired uh, DRAM die in a the single package with 112 8 DQ pins. This DRAM gives us uh, the uh, 64 gigabyte and 136 gigabyte per second for the capacity and the bandwidth per package. Under the poor height uh, half length form factor constraint, we can uh, place uh, eight DRAM by 128 DRAM package along with the CXL the controller on a CXL memory module uh, in the right picture. For example, LPDDR5 by 128 DRAM package can provide 512 gigabyte and 1.1 terabyte per second for the CXL memory module respectively. Samsung also to provide a PNM software stack for the seamless and transparent use of the Samsung CXL PNM hardware platform. Our the software stack supports the two types of the execution paths for user convenience, such as the direct execution path and the native execution path. The native execution path automatically the offload the without the modifying the user the application the source code. The direct execution path is for users who, who are willing to call the PNM library that uh, provide the operations. The DAX device driver is used to transfer data to DRAM device within the uh, CXL PNM hardware via the CXL .mem. The CXL PNM device uh, driver is uh, used to control the CXL PNM the hardware by the configuring register via the CXL.io. This slide plot the efficiency and the true throughput value with the GPU and the CXL PNM. When the CXL PNM device accelerates the, the small model, such as uh, OPT 13 billion, using a single acceleration the device. The CXL PNM gives 2.89 times higher the energy efficiency, but only the 10.8% lower the throughput, because it is provisioned with 29% lower bandwidth than the GPU. However, you, we compare the uh, multi the CXL PNM with the multi GPU the appliance for large OPT the model, such as the OPT 66 billion model. In result, CF, uh, CXL PNM give 4.4 times higher energy bandwidth and 50% uh, higher the throughput than the conventional the GPU. Yes, uh, this is the last slide. We compare the hardware and the operating cost of GPU the appliance versus those of CXL PNM appliance with the eight CXL the PNM device. For the operating cost, we consider the, the consumed the electricity with is the proportional to the environment cost. 
For example, CO2 emission, the energy efficiency of CXLPNM appliance reduced the amount of CO2 the emission from 2.46 kg to the 0.88 kg per day. As a result, in terms of 20, uh, CO2 emission, the CXLPNM appliance is uh, 2.8 times less than the GPU appliance. And uh, this analysis show that the CXLPNM appliance is around 4.3 times more the efficient than the uh, GPU the appliance for the energy and the environment cost the respectively. Yeah, thank you for your attention. All right, for, for this talk, we actually have two more engineers from Samsung who's going to share the podium just for Q&A, uh, Sokhan Lee and uh, Jin Inso. So let's again, let's start from the Slack questions. Yeah, question from Grace Luo, University of Wisconsin-Madison. How does PIM support system level debug such as error indication and fault isolation? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, hi, this is Sukhan uh, Lee. Thank you for the very nice question. That's uh, how can we solve the last problem on the PIM devices? Uh, in that case, uh, we have uh, two different kinds of ECC in the GRAM mode. One is on the ECC and the one, I, one is uh, uh, link ECC. On the ECC can cover the uh, errors from the PIM and the uh, we will uh, embed some sort of uh, a link ECC module in, inside of the DRAM also, so uh, we can fully uh, support those kind of thing. And uh, uh, we have also uh, have standard to cover those kind of error resilience in the uh, JEDEX standard of the HVM PIM. So uh, uh, that would be a good question, and uh, this is my answer. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, can you go to the maybe left? Uh, can you identify yourself, username and affiliation? Sure, Ian Cutcher is small and more. Um, really love the CXL PNM you know, description and presentation. That feels like that's an area of the industry that's going to be really um, probed in the future. However, to date with Samsung CXL product family, you're currently using third party montage controllers. Um, so, is the view to this that Samsung is actually going to create its own controller so they can? Um, for this, or are you still going to be relying on third parties to provide that? Yeah, actually, uh, currently we are opening the or uh, making our controller to the uh, with the industry or with uh, own our con no, our controller. We think about the both of them, but currently. Uh, for the CXL uh, memory expander, we are uh, using the uh, we are collaborating with the third party company, as like the Vampers or Montage or the other company. Okay, for the for CXL PNM controller, yeah, we are investigating the uh, this kind of the, some partnership with the industry. Awesome, thank you. Next question. Sure, thank you. Uh, this is Tao. Um, yeah, uh, thank you for the presentation. I have a question regarding your uh, performance comparison between the GPU and the CXL PNM uh, single device. So uh, my understanding is that the uh, CXL PNM actually had the, the advantage of the large capacity, right? You mentioned that it's a 12, uh, 512 gigabyte. But for the single device, it shows that it, it has a slight drop uh, in terms of throughput. So can you shed some lights on that one? Why we, ha we still have a a slight uh, throughput job, even though we have a very big capacity uh, compared to the uh, GPU. Yeah, thank you. Uh, okay, actually, as you know, the GPU system has more bandwidth compared to the CXL PNM. As you know, two terabytes will be the uh, current the memory bandwidth. But uh, so that's the reason why the laptop graph show you that some little bit uh, some slower than the GPU case. But the right picture shows the more throughput. That's because for the because of the uh, because of we are uh, huge memory, we can accommodate huge uh, huge model in one device, and we can compare the, this. Uh, we can compare this with the eight GPU device. We can concurrently process the eight requests at the same time. So even though we have some slower than the GPU uh, compared to the GPU, but we can 
uh, increase the throughput. That's the reason why the right picture shows you the, the more throughput than that. So, uh, briefly, the GPU are uh, uh, using the uh, model level parallelism because of their some uh, small amount of memory, but the CXL can um, accommodate the, the data parallelism. So that's the reason why. Right? Okay, yeah. thank you. All right, can I go, go to the slide again? Yeah, question from Andrew Krapivin, Rutgers University. How does adding compute to memory impact area and cost per GB? Uh, it's a little bit hard to answer for now, so uh, <laughs> we will publish uh, another paper soon, so uh, wait for that. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Yeah, they need to talk with legal first, so. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, yeah. Okay, let's go to the, the next next questioner. Uh, George Kozma, Chips and Cheese. Um, so I noticed on your LPDDR slides, you guys didn't mention anything about BF16 support. Was that just an omission or something that you guys decided that the LPDDR PIM version didn't need? Sorry, Gesh, can you repeat your question again? Um, so on the LPDDR slide, you guys didn't mention anything about BS16 support. It was just FP16 and FP32. Uh, yeah, we will uh, support uh, a floating point, of course, and a uh, small number of uh, integer format will be uh, supported also. Not uh, a little bit uh, expanded from the HBMP. Yeah. Okay, thank you. 